This is in response to Dr. Paul Krugman's article in the New York Times on Monday, December 14th, 2015. Hope from Paris. And what Dr. Krugman is talking about uh, is the accord that was reached over the weekend, I believe it was 178 countries, uh, in terms of let's try to find a way uh, to save the planet. And there aren't a lot of teeth in this, but things have changed quite a bit from the last uh, major agreement, which was uh, Kyoto back, I believe it was 1998. Uh, Bill Clinton started to implement those things, and then when George Bush came in and him and Cheney, uh, they just said, hey, we don't have to do any of this shit. You know, and then, of course, they uh, blame China the whole time after that, basically saying, well, it doesn't make any difference what we do. Uh, China's the worst polluter. And uh, until they change their tune, that there's nothing that can be done. And, of course, all the politicians played into that aspect of it. Well, guess what? Uh, if you've been keeping up with the news at all, you know that uh, China has just some terrible, terrible, terrible pollution problems. People are running around with masks on their faces. Schools are being closed. Businesses are being closed. And certain, uh, certain restrictions on the use of cars. So they have changed their tune. But uh, in terms of the only two aspects of what, uh, uh, what have been holding back global climate uh, conditions uh, uh, changes is, as I said, China. And then the second thing is um, our good friends our good brothers and sisters on the Republican side, the GOP, the grand old party who is trying to hold back everything. Now, they are not willing to make any concessions whatsoever in reference to global climate change. They are doubling and they are tripling down. Now, there's not going to be any changes. There may be some very hard to get those changes through Congress because it appears as if Congress will be, or the House will be um, Republican to possibly 2022, uh, depending upon how the census goes or, or, or how many, who is elected in the year 2020. Uh, but, uh, and Obama has been doing his part. Uh, he's been issuing executive orders. And let's just hope that the courts hold them up because the uh, Republicans don't have any way to counteract that except for to take them to court. And, of course, we know that these big special interests of oil, the Koch brothers, etc., will continue uh, to try and buy elections and buy uh, candidates uh, so that they can continue to get their um, special interests. But we know right now that the thing that we're all looking for is to keep as much oil and gas and coal, especially coal, in the ground for now <laughs> until this planet blows up, basically. And there's also a new thing that all of the Republican candidates have to take into consideration, uh, is that the decreased cost of solar, I mean, the, 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 the decrease in the solar and wind uh, costs are just astronomical to the point that they're almost competitive with, with oil and gas. And uh, that's just, and, you know, we're just at the beginning phases of this. Also, there are just tremendous, tremendous increases in the capacity of battery storage and energy storage so that, uh, you know, we can store this stuff and hold on to it and use it when we need it, let's say in the home or something like that, uh, so that, you know, we can, yes, we can keep that type of energy in the ground forever, starting very, very soon. But we must have the will to get it going. And hopefully the will is, is that the number of jobs, green jobs that are going to be created, I think was said that, uh, that uh, solar jobs in the United States already surpass coal jobs in the United States. So there's, a, you know, I feel for my brothers and sisters in West Virginia, the coal country, uh, but you know, things have got to change. And we need to move on it and we need to move on it right away. You know, so there will be new special interests for renewable energy and things that are related to green energy as we come in to do all kinds of things that can help the planet. And uh, let's just hope that these changes are something that everyone takes hold to. It seems as if many of the other countries in Western Europe are very staunchly behind this. Uh, let's just see uh, what's going to happen. Now, remember, I want to just want to bring up one point. Is it possible for a Republican candidate for president in 2016 to be to win and be against global climate change? Can they win and be against gay marriage? Can they win and be against an increase in the minimum wage? Can they win and be against 
in increasing taxes on the wealthy, and they can they win uh, if they are not willing to say that that women should get paid as much as men, equal pay for equal work. I don't know. They're all they're against all of them. Uh, I don't know if the global climate change will play much into the 2016 election, but I think that the other issues will play a lot. Let's see how it goes.